Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to take a look at isomorphisms and bipartite graphs. So here is a nice fancy definition of isomorphisms. So we said g1 is equal to v1 e1, g2 is v2 e2, and we say that g1 is isomorphic to g2, that's the symbol for an isomorphism, if we have a function f from v1 to v2 where f is a bijection and essentially for all the edges in e1 they exist in e1 only if f of a f of b is an e2 so if a b is an e1 then f of a f of b is an e2 and you're saying what does all of this mean what is an isomorphism okay there's the definition know the definition but come back to it after i show you an example Isomorphisms are a way of saying that two graphs have the exact same properties. So here I have two graphs. I have G1 and G2, A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, and W. These are the same graphs. So how do we know they're the same graphs? Well, we can take a look at their edges. So we can take this edge AD and we can say, where do we have this edge, which we'll call e1 in g2. Well, it kind of looks like this edge right here from xw. Because when you think about it, if we just move this d in here, then we'd have the exact same graph. So an isomorphism says, well, look, these graphs aren't exactly the same because we have different labels on the nodes and we have different positions for the nodes, but structurally, they have the same sort of edge structure, they have the same vertex structure, so maybe these graphs have the exact same properties. So if I figure out one thing about one graph, I can say, look, it's the same in the other graph. So essentially G1 and G2 are isomorphic because they have the same structural properties. So let's map our vertices from G1 onto G2. So this function takes A and it says, okay, which vertex does A represent in G2? And that's going to be X. Okay, what about D? Well, D is sort of the same thing as W, so F maps D to W. C goes to Z, and B goes to Y. So this is our isomorphism here. And we can check to make sure the edges are the same. So in G1, we have edges AD, AB, AC, and B, C. So all of our A's have turned to X's. So we have X, X, X. All of our B's turn to Y. All of our C's turn to Z's. And all of our D's turn to W's. So we have A, D, and G1. So we should have X, W, and G2. Okay, that's good. We have A, B in G1, so we should have X, Y in G2. Okay, that's good. We have AC in G1, so we should have X, Z in G2. That's good. And we have BC in G1, so we should have Y, Z in G2. Okay, so now that we've seen with the graph how isomorphisms work, let's go back to the definition. Okay, so there's a function from V1 to v2. What does that mean? That means that the nodes in g1, these letters, they map on two nodes in the second graph. So that's the function. It goes from the set of v1 to the set of v2. So f is bijective, which means that all nodes have a corresponding node in the previous graph. And each node in the first graph goes to exactly one node in the second graph. Okay, and if there's an edge in the first graph, that edge is going to be in the second graph. So this part two here, we showed down below with our edge mappings. So this is essentially part one, and this is part two of our definition. So that's an isomorphism. So here's another example. We have this graph on the left, G1, 
and this graph on the right, G2. And to be nice, I've given them the exact same labels. So f of 1 is equal to 1, f of 2 is equal to 2, all the way down to f of 10 is equal to 10. So I arranged sort of a grid in G1, and for G2, I arranged this sort of interesting looking stepladder. And these are the exact same graph. G1 is G2, G1 is isomorphic to G2. So we can do our little squiggly equal sign here to say they're isomorphisms. But what's interesting about this isomorphism? Well, what's interesting is if you notice on the left and right side, we never have maps from anything on the left to anything on the left. And we don't have anything on the right connected with anything else on the right. So they only have edges with the vertices across from them. So that's sort of interesting. In fact, there's a very special type of name for this graph. This is called a bipartite graph. Essentially what this says is that a graph is bipartite if we can split the set of vertices into two smaller subsets. So we call this VA and VB. And each edge in E, so each of the edges in the graph, has one vertex from VA and one vertex from VB. So what this means is that we can't have X going to Z in our edge set. We have to pick one from the left side and that connects with one from the right side. And that's for all of the edges. So all of our edges are gonna have one from the left with one from the right. And that is a bipartite graph. It's bipartite because by means two, and partite is just partitions. So that means that we've done a two partition graph. We can split the graph right down the middle and then nothing will connect with each other if we split those two. So essentially, if we do put this line right down the middle here, there will be no edges remaining in the graph. So that is what a bipartite graph is. So before we talked about complete graphs, we also have complete bipartite graphs. So let's do, let's not do red. Let's take K23. What this means is that there's gonna be two on one side, two vertices on one side. There's gonna be three vertices on the other side. And what that means is that each vertex on the left side is gonna to go to each of the vertices on the right side. So we have number one going to all of the vertices on the right, and we have number two going to all the vertices on the right. So this is the complete graph two, three. So what is KMN? Well, if we have a bunch of vertices, which will say these are M vertices, and then we have a bunch of vertices that happen to be N vertices, then essentially what this means is that each vertex on the left goes to each vertex on the right, and we get a nice looking stepladder. Well, not really a stepladder, now it just looks sort of like a mess. So what's interesting about this, how many edges are there in a complete bipartite, bipartite graph? Well, let's take a look on the left here. This first vertex goes to three. The second vertex goes to three. So that is three times, oops, sorry, that is three plus three edges, which is six. Okay, what if there's M? Well, this first one goes to N edges. The second one goes to N vertices, so there's N more edges. This third one has N more edges. So essentially, this is N plus N plus N all the way up to plus N, and this happens m times, so there's always going to be m times n edges. So in our left case here, there's 2 times 3 is equal to 6 edges. So a complete bipartite graph of the form KMN will always have m times, times n edges, and there will be m plus n vertices. So we're going to use that later for a theorem when we get to planarity. That won't be covered yet. So 
I just answered this question. I totally forgot I had a new slide for it, but the answer is just m times n. So m times n edges. Uh, here's a question about complete graphs. How many edges are in, say, k5? Let's talk about a complete graph to make up for this. So we pick one, and we have one, two, three, four edges. So this one's going to be plus four. We go to our next vertex, and then we're going to get plus three edges. We go to our next one, we get plus two. We go to our last one, we get plus one, and then plus zero. So Km is going to have the sum of i from i equals zero to m minus one edges. So what that's saying is that you take the first vertex and it goes to m minus one other vertices, so you get m minus one new edges. You take the next one, it goes to m minus one other vertices, but one of those edges has already been counted, so we add m minus two edges, so on and so forth. So that's the number of edges for complete graphs and complete bipartite graphs. So here's a question. What does the complement of KMN look like? Let's, let's do an example here. Let's just take K33. So there's K33. And what we say is, okay, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there, 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 and there, and there, there, and there. Okay. What does the complement look like? So let's take a look at the complement. Well, what's interesting before is we said that the complement, when we took, say, E prime, it was equal to all of the edges in the complete graph Km minus the edges in whatever graph we have. So E of G complement was equal to all the edges in Km minus the edges in the, the original graph. So we're saying, okay, wait, not KMN. If it's bipartite, then we should literally have no edges because we would think, okay, let's just substitute this into that then. But that would be wrong. What we do have is we have these edges here. Those are the only edges we have remaining. In fact, we also have this edge. So this is the complement of K33. So what does it look like if we have KMN? Well, essentially what we get is we get some interesting results. In fact, let's, uh, let's redraw. Let's redraw the complement of K33. I want to draw it in a different way to give you the insight of what's going to happen here. So before we had these three vertices, I'm going to redraw these vertices a little bit. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Here's the complement of K33. I just, I, I drew it in a different way. And what do we notice about this? Well, this is K3 and this is K3. It's, it's pretty cool, isn't it? complement of K33 is really just two graphs of K3. So what do you think happens when we take the complement of K44? Well, we'd have, let's just do one side here. We get this, we get this, we get this, we get that one with that one and that one, and we get this. So we get um, this sort of interesting spiral. I've never actually looked at this graph this way. It's kind of cool. And we get two of these. So we get two times of these. And of course we can just sort of redraw this. How many edges does it have? It has one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, what? Hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why does this have seven edges? I believe I might have written one twice. We'll see though. Um, Call this A, B, C, D, A, B, C, and D. So 
A goes to B, A goes to C, and A goes to D. Okay, B goes to C. Yeah, I have B goes to C twice. Okay, so B goes to C, B goes to D, and C goes to D. And this is just K4, and we have another copy of this, so we'd have K4. So, let's extend this a little bit. What does KMN complement look like? This is just going to be the... It's, it's going to be a graph with two components. One component is going to be KM. Another component is going to be KN. And these are going to be disconnected components. So the complement of a bipartite graph is... Or, sorry, the complement of a complete bipartite graph is simply just the two complete graphs where our VA is KA, essentially. The, uh, the cardinality of VA is the cardinality of KA. And the cardinality of VB is just the cardinality of K... Sorry, it should be KM, and the cardinality of VB is just KN. So... That's what happens when you take complements and bipartite graphs. It's pretty cool stuff. So that was isomorphisms and bipartite graphs. This video went a little bit longer than I thought, but I need to take each topic slowly and sort of compress them into their own videos because there's so many terms going on here that doing them all in one video and not giving them much explanation would be crazy. So if this helped, there's more content over at trevtutor.com. You can leave comments below if you need to ask questions and if this helps you, share this with your friends, because that would be awesome for me and awesome for them. So I will see you guys next time, and hopefully you understand this material just a little bit better.